Morning all, it's post bag. And here's the first one, and the clue is DS3231 AT24C32. Doesn't feel very well protected, this one. And here it is, and it is a real time clock. So this is an I squared C real time clock module. And it uses the DS3231, DS standing for Dallas Semiconductor, although now they're owned by Maxim. And also on here is an Atmel AT24C32, uh, which is an E-squared PROM. Now, in some ways, this is an upgrade to this older real-time clock, the Tiny RTC. Uh, this one had the DS1307 this very small 8-pin uh, chip, I think that's the one. No, that's the 24C32, that's the uh, E-squared PROM. This is the DS1307. So you can see that the DS3231 is a fair bit bigger. And one of the reasons for that is that it contains the crystal. Uh, this one, I'm not sure if that's a crystal or a ceramic resonator. On this one, it very clearly is a crystal. That's a 32.768 kilohertz crystal for the clock. But uh, this chip has the crystal actually integrated inside it. Now, the new module uh, in common with the old modules has a lithium battery in a little holder. But what they've done now is they've changed this to a CR2032 uh, primary cell, whereas these modules used an LIR2032, which is a rechargeable. And although in some ways it is quite nice to have a rechargeable because in theory it lasts forever. These things always seem to just not last their full lifetime because I think maybe perhaps they were being overcharged or something and they puffed up and uh, didn't actually last probably as long as the uh, the primary cells which can give 10 years. So here's the data sheet for the uh, DS3231 and it's described as an extremely accurate I squared C integrated RTC, real-time clock, TCXO, which is temperature controlled crystal oscillator, and crystal. Now I've had some experience with the old uh, tiny RTC. You can see there's one here directly mounted onto the back of this um, LCD with five-way push button. You can push it in four directions and uh, that fits onto this uh, Sane Smart Leonardo. So I'll just power that up. So this is a, a project that uh, my friend Brett and I were working on uh, about a year ago, I think. And uh, it's relatively straightforward to read the registers of the real-time clock chip and put them on the display. But what's incredibly difficult is writing all the clock setting routines so, I mean, you can see there that the, although I've set the date and that's correct, uh, the day's wrong. So let me try and change the day. Uh, so set date and time, day, and then you go left and right to scroll through the days. So it is Thursday and that comes up as Thursday. Let me just uh, change the seconds. We did a slightly different method for this. We figured that typing in a number of seconds was a bit pointless. So we've got a 0, 0 option, 15, 30, and 45. And uh, just do one more. Let's do the hour. So where's that? Down. And it's what? Uh, 10 a.m. ish. There we are. 10.05, Thursday, the 11th of September. 2014. Now if you look at this uh, on the data sheet it says the real-time clock maintains seconds, minutes, hours, day, date, month and year. The date at the end of the month is automatically adjusted for months with fewer than 31 days including corrections for leap year. Well that's all fine but none of that applies to setting the clock. So here are all the registers for seconds, minutes, hour, day, date, month, year including century, but um, when you write to these registers, there's nothing uh, to stop you going out of bounds. There's no bounds checking. 
when you write to these registers, the registers themselves, when they run, do all that clever stuff about uh, 31 days in some months and 30 in others and leap years and all that stuff, but not when you write to the registers. So that means you have to do all your bounds checking for setting the clock in your program. So you can see here, for example, I've got it set to September. The date is 29th, 30th, 31st. Well, of course, there isn't a 31st of September because um, we didn't actually bother to put in the fact that you couldn't select 31st of September because it's just too much work. So you can actually select 30, 31st of September and there it is on the clock, the 31st of September. Now the real-time clock will roll over to the 1st of October and then it will continue to keep those registers correct and not allow dates that don't exist. Now if these registers in the chip had an increment decrement facility, then the chip itself could do the bounds checking when you're setting the clock as well as when the clock is being read. Um, but that doesn't seem to be how it works and this chip doesn't appear to be any better in that respect than the old DS1307. So these things are great fun and uh, this one probably even more so. Um, and please don't let me put you off building your own digital clock because it is good fun. But uh, when you come to the clock setting routines, just be prepared for quite a lot of work. So this is uh, DS3231, memory module for Arduino, I, I squared C, precision RTC or real time clock, 99p, that's very cheap, uh, 12p postage, and that came from Lakey X101. Okay, here's the next one. Now the only clue I can see on this one is USB down at the bottom there. So I don't want to cut up whatever this is. Yes, I figured this was what it was. This is another one of these charger doctors. But this one apparently has 10 memories. And also, now where is it? Yes, there's a little uh, USB micro, is it micro? Yes, micro input socket there. So I think this can be powered even when the five volts disappears from this plug so that it can measure the capacity of power banks. Well, I've been playing with this for now about 20 minutes and I'm completely baffled. Um, something interesting is happening here. This power bank is only sort of partly detecting that it's uh, got something plugged in. So every five seconds it cuts power and this thing resets. But what's interesting is when it resets, it doesn't seem to lose the data. So let's just wait for it to reset again. It goes to all eights, but it holds the milliamp hour number. So it looks like this thing holds the capacity value even through a power on reset. Now, if I put a, a load on here, this is actually another power bank. So this red power bank is charging a white power bank. The current starts to rise. The voltage drops a little bit in sympathy, that's not surprising. And the milliamp hour rating starts to climb up. Now you get this funny flashing thing. No idea what that means, but the milliamp hour rating is still climbing up and the current is still being drawn. So I don't know what that means. The voltage is quite low. Let's take the load off. So we've clocked up 31 milliamp hours. And let's just wait for this thing to shut down and reset the power of the charger doctor. So that's reset and it still held that value. So I'm not sure what this other input socket is, the micro input socket there, but it doesn't appear to be a way of just holding this thing with power. This thing seems to be able to retain the data in any case. And in fact, just now when I had two power banks, one coming in on this cable and another one in on this cable, then the third power bank drawing current through this thing seemed to be able to just draw more current. So I'm completely mystified at the moment. I'm going to have to uh, start reading up on this thing, but it came with no manual. So I'm going to have to search for one online. Now, if you press and hold for about three seconds, it seems to go up to the next data set, this number on the bottom right increments. 
So that's fine. If you double click, it goes into this weird, rather indistinct flashing on and off mode. And then a single press in that mode also increments the data set. Double click to get out of that mode. So none the wiser, I'm afraid. But it does look promising. I like the fact that it retains the milliamp hour data even through a power on uh, cycle. That's currently showing zero. Then I don't know which data set I'm on at the moment. Anyway, I'm going to have to do some uh, further reading, further research, further tests. But if I can finally get this thing to work reliably and test the capacity of various power banks, then I can start uh, working out whether things like this, which was the power bank with two 18650s in it for four pounds, whether things like this are worth the money. So I got the LCD USB mini voltage and current detector mobile power USB charger tester meter for four pounds 39 free postage from Miss Jun 2010. Although I've since discovered it's on Banggood for £3.93. Right, no clues on this one. So this one will be a total surprise. Tiny Sign Electronics. Ah, okay, this is another uh, Pro Mini. Ah, now this one is, well two, is the type that has the little link and it is linked, and I think that link was for either 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Let's have a closer look. Now I've just gone to eBay, ebay.com, to remind myself what these things are. And if you do a search for 3.3 volt Pro Mini, and you set the price plus shipping to lowest first, you get these two items, Pro Mini Enhancement 3.3 volt or 5 volt adjustable. Now the price of these is pretty astonishing, $2.25. And at first glance, these two appear to be the same. But look, this one is 16 megahertz, and this one is 8 megahertz. So it would seem that one is loaded with a slightly different bootloader version to the other. So let's just make some comparisons. These are all 3.3 volt Pro Minis. This is the one I've just received, which is uh, adjustable 3V3 or 5 volts. This is the one that said spark fun on the back, which I got the other day. And this one says Deek Robot. Now, one of the first things I noticed is how thin this so-called enhancement one is. If my camera will focus on that, you can see that the board is about half the thickness of these other boards. Very thin it is. Um, secondly, there are a couple of resistors up here near these 3.3 volt and 5 volt links. So my guess is that the regulator on there is an adjustable voltage regulator and it's using resistors to set the voltage. So the regulator on this says KBAA. So I'll just have a little look and see if I can uh, find out what that is. And I can't quite make out what's written on the crystal there. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit further. Uh, well, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it says 80 something fairly indistinct and then M. So it's a fairly good guess that that's uh, 8 megahertz. Let's have a look at this KBAA. Right, well, I've come up with a Micrel MIC 5205 150 milliamp low noise LDO regulator. And down here we've got the markings, and on the right we've got KBAA, and that's the adjustable one, so it is as I thought. So looking at the uh, eBay listing image and comparing it with the real thing, up the top there it shows that if the solder bridge is to the left it's 5 volts, if it's to the right it's 3.3, and on mine the solder bridge is definitely to the right. So this, on the face of it, looks like it's 8 megs, 3.3 volts. Good. And uh, that price is pretty unbeatable. $2.25 uh, free shipping, and that came from Zhangyun727. 
Okay, let's just quickly do one more. I know what this is because I received two identical packages and I opened one of them. And it is a car cigarette lighter plug. Now I wanted these for my LED experiments. Um, it's quite nice, it's got a switch uh, and that lights up with a red LED. It's got a fuse. Let's have a look at the rating of that fuse. So that's an F uh, 5 amp fuse, so it's that fast blow 5 amp and the wire is 22AWG. Let me see that, 22AWG. So is 22AWG rated for 5 amps? I mean it looks like it probably is, just about. So that should be good for up to about 50 watts uh, LEDs and here it is plugged into my car 12 volt booster pack. Press the switch and the little light comes on. Very nice. Now I actually bought three of these, uh, two for 99p free postage from Hit Time 3C and Top Geschenk. And then a bit later I bought another one for 81p because it was 99 cents. And that's from DEA in the box. Uh, sorry, correction, my mistake. It was actually $1.27, which is showing as 79 pence DEA in the box. And so that is today's post bag.